Now, like I said earlier, we're looking at... Hey, you ready here? Okay, so we're looking at trying to connect the idea of slope with this stuff in calculus. We're going to talk about something called rate of change, okay? And remember, you're always dealing with two quantities, a y value and an x value, okay? And we've done that before in grade 10. These two values now change in calculus. So given that x changes, there will also be a change in y. Now, I think what you learned before is we learned something called the average rate of change, okay? Physics, you see all that all the time. Well, the average rate of change over an interval, which spans from x1 to y1, is the following. Well, remember, for every x1, there's a corresponding y1. For every x2, there's a corresponding y2. So how do I find the average rate of change? Well, once again, it's the change in the y value, okay, divided by the change in the x value. And, of course, the y values differ by taking y2 minus y1. And, of course, you want to find the difference between the x values. That's x2 minus x1. And most of you know this as slope. Okay, So this is from grade 10. We call this thing slope. Okay. Now, that's grade 10. You're now in grade 12, or you will be soon. And uh, you want to look at some more sophisticated things. And this is the idea of calculus. So, Rebecca, when you ask me about what the heck is calculus, okay, this is the idea. In calculus, we're not looking for an average rate of change. We're not saying from start to end what happens, okay? In calculus, what we're saying is we're watching this movie. We're playing it. It's starting and it's ending. And about halfway through the movie, I want to pause. And at that moment when I pause, I want to say what's happening at that moment, okay? Or the word that we like to use in calculus is the instantaneous, okay? At that moment. That the so, thing? kind of the physics thing too, yes. But the idea is in calculus, we're not looking for a range. We're looking at what happens at that particular moment. So really what I'm saying to you is if I ask you to find the limit of the average rate of change, we call this the instantaneous rate of change. And this interpretation is it's not just regular slope, but it's the slope of a tangent line. Well, how do I show this in calculus? Well, I'm going to still use this formula for the change, okay, the average rate of change. But the idea now is, and I showed you this earlier, I want now that your second value, the limit of x2, what should that approach or get closer and closer to? x1. Excellent. And this is the idea of now the instantaneous rate of change. Okay? And this is what calculus is all about. Okay? Tell me what happens at one instant in time when we've got these two variables that we're looking at. Okay? And as an example, let's look at this down here. Okay? Here's a graph representing temperature change over time. Okay? I know it's a little bit hard to read, but let me just help you with the axes. But I think this is 20 here, this is 40, this is 60, and this is 80, and they go up by 5. Okay. Actually, it's better on your printout than mine. Okay. Now, I'm going to ask you two questions, and I'm going to show you the difference between grade 10 and calculus. Okay. The first question I'd like us to answer is this. Estimate the average rate of change of temperature with respect to time from 2 minutes to 7 minutes. Meaning, tell me what happens at 2 here. This is 2 comma. Can someone help me out with the actual y value? 60 or 70? 70, right? Yeah, 70, okay. And then what happens at 7 minutes? So 7 minutes is over here. So what's this point? I think that's 7 comma 60. So how would I find the average rate of change over this interval? It's grade 10, okay? Average rate of change, once again, is just y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, okay? So go ahead and plug in the points, please. I guess I'll plug in y2 as 60, y1 as 70, 7 take away 2. What's negative 10 divided by 5? 
They have two, and please put units on here. We're talking about a rate of change of temperature, so degrees Celsius, and the time is per minute. Okay. Sorry, man. Okay. So that's average rate of change, the stuff you've done before. And I'm going to ask you to use your ruler now to actually draw in that secant line. Okay. This is not a tangent line, but this is a secant line. Okay. Secant line. Secant line. Yes, Megan. All right, so that's the secant line, which is part A. This is the average rate of change. Now, how does this differ from the next part? The next part here says estimate the instantaneous rate of change. So really what we're saying now, when you hear this word instantaneous, is the limit of x2 approaching x1 of y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. Okay. Now write that down first, and then I would like you to use your ruler to visually draw in that line. Okay. So what I'm saying to you is you want to move this point. Just watch me first. You're going to take this point, 7, and you're going to move it closer and closer to 2 so that the two points are now almost right on top of each other. So if I were to draw in now my line at the instantaneous rate of change, hopefully you'll draw something like this. Okay, And what you should be drawing is, yes, this is a tangent line. So please, can you now draw that into your notes? Okay. Now, visually, you've seen the difference, I hope, between average rate of change and instantaneous rate of change. Now, my question to you is, tell me what's actually happening at t equals to 2 seconds. How is the temperature changing at 2 seconds? I don't know. How do we find the slope of this line in green? That's right, find the slope of the tangent line. How do we find the slope of the tangent line? We need two points. Do we have two points? Yeah. Of course we have more than two points. So tell me one of them. What's one of the points on this line? Any of them. 040. Nice, Alex. 040. Cool. Tell me another point on this line. 270. Nice, Davis. Good. So sometimes it's naturally good to just shout out a number and hopefully it works. So now I'm going to ask you to do this. Why don't you plug in those values, okay? Plug in the value of 70 for y2 and 40 for y1. And let's divide this by x2, which is 2, and x1 is 0, okay? And let's see what you get here. What's 70 take away 40? That's about 30. 30 divided by 2 is 15. So notice what I'm saying here is the following. Okay, I'm going to write a little blurb underneath me. Okay, okay. I'm going to say at the instant when time is equal to two minutes, the temperature. Oops, the temperature. Is changing at a rate of 15 degrees per minute. Okay. So hopefully if you can look at the graph, you'll see that at the moment in time at two seconds or two minutes, the temperature is actually increasing. Yet if I were to compare what happens from two to seven minutes, look, the temperature actually decreased over that time period. Okay. I'm going to stop here for today. Next day is when you come back, and I'm going to really show you the meat of calculus. So please be here for that. Okay?